Hey, I just want to let you know that this video is part of a larger course called Operating Systems 101 on CyberTrainingPro.com. So if you enjoy the content, you want to see the rest of the course, or you want to see other courses that we have or our career services, make sure to check out CyberTrainingPro.com. I'll leave a link in the description so you can check it out. All right, let's get started. In this video, we're going to focus on DNS on Windows Server 2022. So we're going to talk about the installation process, and we're going to walk through those steps. We're also going to talk about configuring and managing DNS. As far as dependencies, what you need is you need an installation of Windows Server 2022, which can either be a physical installation or a virtual machine. You also need administrator level privileges on that server. If you're not sure how to set up a virtual machine of Windows Server 2022, go back and check out that video first and then dive into this video. Now, as far as the installation process with Windows Server, if you're setting up a domain, on your server, so Active Directory, and you're configuring a domain, it's gonna automatically install DNS for you. If you don't do that, then you'll actually have to go through these steps and install the role for DNS. So the very first thing that you need to do when you're setting up DNS is you need to assign a static IP address. So there's a few different ways that you can do it. First of all, in Server Manager, you can click on your local server, and then you can click where you have your interface here, and it says IPv4 address assigned, we're gonna click on that, and that's gonna open up this menu here. The other way that you can do it is if you go to the Start menu, and you type View Network Connections, and you click on that, it's gonna give you the exact same location. So we're gonna select our interface, and we're gonna right click it and select Properties. Now we're gonna select IPv4, and we're gonna select Properties. Now in here, you need to assign an actual static IP address instead of obtaining it from a server. So we'll select use the following IP address. If you click in the subnet mask box, it's automatically gonna populate that and we'll assign a default gateway. Usually it's a dot one IP address. As far as preferred DNS server, we're actually gonna put in 127.0. 0, 1, so we're going to actually use our local system for this DNS server. And then we'll hit OK, and we'll hit Close. Now you're going to get this menu over here on the right side talking about networks and making your system discoverable. We're not going to really do anything with that. We're going to ignore that. But what you need to do next is you need to actually restart your system. If you don't restart your system, you're going to keep getting errors about not having a static IP address. So we're just gonna go ahead and go to the start menu and we're gonna restart the system. All right, so once you're logged back into your server under server manager, you're gonna to go to manage and then you're gonna to go to add roles and features. On this first screen here, we're gonna hit next. We're gonna select role-based or feature-based installation and then we're gonna hit next. You have to select your server where you're gonna install DNS. So we'll select that and hit next. Now we're gonna actually select DNS server as the feature that we're gonna add. And then we're gonna make sure that this checkbox is checked and we're gonna hit add features. Then we're gonna hit next. We don't need to add any additional features, so we'll go ahead and hit next. This is just gonna tell us a little bit more about domain name system or DNS. We're good with that, so we're gonna hit next. And then we want to actually make sure this checkbox is checked to restart the server if required. This is going to say, do you want to allow automatic restarts? We're going to select yes, and we're going to hit install. At this point, it's saying the installation has succeeded, so we'll go ahead and hit close. Now, there's two different ways that you can access the DNS tools. The first way is in Server Manager. Under Tools, you're going to have DNS right here, so you can select that option. The other way is if you go to the Start menu, and then you go to Windows Administrative Tools, you're gonna to have DNS in here as well. So either way is gonna get you to the same tools. It doesn't matter which one you choose. Really, it's just a matter of preference for which one you wanna use. Are you tired of overpaying for cybersecurity training? Are you interested in training from industry professionals? Are you looking for cybersecurity career services? If you answered yes to any of those questions, then CyberTrainingPro.com is the perfect platform for you. At Cyber Training Pro, we're a one-stop shop for all your cybersecurity needs. We can train you for industry certifications or just improve your overall knowledge and skills in a certain area. Unlike other platforms, we don't stop there. We can also coach you throughout your career, 
practice your interview skills, or create a high-performing resume with our career services. CyberTrainingPro.com isn't just another training platform. Students get exclusive access to our private community where we go beyond training courses to provide additional content, tips and tricks, and engagement with both other students and staff. Look, by the year 2025, there could be as many as 3.5 million job openings in cybersecurity. With so much opportunity, why not maximize your career potential with a platform that cares about your success? Come join us at CyberTrainingPro.com and start building your future today. Now for the rest of this video, we're gonna use an installation of Windows Server 2022 that I have where it already has Active Directory domain services installed. Now something that we might deal with with DNS is something called a forward lookup. Forward lookups in DNS allow you to provide a name like a system's name and the DNS server is gonna associate the IP address to that name. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to Server Manager and we're gonna to go to Tools and then DNS. Then on the left here, I'm gonna select our server and I'm gonna expand that. I'm gonna expand forward lookup zones and then demo.lab is our domain. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and expand that as well. Now you can see here this last entry, that is our current server's name. So if I open up a command prompt window here, so I'll go to start menu and type CMD and then open up the command prompt window. And I'm gonna type ping OS 101 Win 22 DC1 because that's the name of our server. And I'll hit return. So you can see that we're getting responses from that ping because that is this current server. So if we're on another system and we use that name, we could actually ping that name instead of providing the IP address. So now if we go back to our DNS tools and we right click in the empty space here, we select new host, A or quad A. We're gonna put in a name here. It's gonna be a custom name. So test one, two, three, four. And just so you can see that nothing is gonna come up as that right now, I'm gonna do ping test one, two, three, four, right? That's the name that I have not submitted yet, but I put it into the field. I'm gonna hit return and it's not gonna find anything. So no host was found with that name. So if we go back here, again, test one, two, three, four. I'm gonna use the same IP address as our current server. So 192.168.163.133. I'm gonna select create associated pointer record, and then I'm gonna hit add host. I'm gonna hit okay on this message here, and then hit done. All right, so now we've created that A record, so we'll go back to our command prompt window. I'm gonna type ipconfig slash flush DNS, and that's essentially just going to refresh all the DNS information that our system knows about. Now if we do ping test one, two, three, four, that's actually finding our local system. So now we have two different A records that are associated to our local system. Now the next thing that I wanna talk about is interfaces with DNS. If a system has multiple IP addresses or interfaces, you can actually limit which IP addresses are gonna serve DNS requests. So if we go ahead and go back to Server Manager, we'll select Tools, DNS, we're gonna select our server on the left-hand side here and right-click it. We're gonna select Properties. So this is gonna take us to this dialog box here. Now, by default, it's selected to all IP addresses. If we wanna limit it, we can select this only the following IP addresses, and then we can select whichever ones that we wanna allow. So this first one, that's gonna be an IPv6 address. The second one will be IPv4. So we can just uncheck it and then hit Apply and OK. The next thing I wanna talk about is root hints. That's another common use for DNS. Now root hints are useful if your DNS server can't resolve a DNS query locally from a hosted zone or from the DNS server cache. Now it's in this exact same window here and there's just another tab, it's called root hints. So you can go in here and you can add additional root hints or you can edit or remove other ones. And you can see there's a fully qualified domain name with a dot at the end of it or a period. And then you have IP addresses here. The other thing that I wanna talk about real quick is forwarders. So again, there's another tab in here called forwarders. Forwarders are DNS servers that your DNS server can use to resolve DNS queries that it can't resolve itself. DNS is gonna use forwarders first before it tries to use root hints. 
So in here, you can edit the information if you want. You can add different IP addresses in here, and then you just hit OK, and then apply, and then that information will get set in your DNS settings. So that's really the basic information about DNS, how it works, how you can install it, how you can configure it, and how you can manage it in Windows Server 2022.